So the hosts on The View got into a debate about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and, um, you know, more broadly about democratic socialism and social democracy. And the way that this debate unfolded absolutely made my day. I mean, I was cheesing from ear to ear when I finished watching this clip. So uh, Joy Behar legitimately looks like she's been listening to Secular Talk because she did exactly what I've been screaming at people on the left to do when presented with these talking points from the right. So let's take a look and then I'll break it down. Isn't democratic socialism very close to liberalism? I mean, no. no. I mean, well, think about it for a second. Medicare, Social Security, uh, well, garbage that's... collection, the post office, but the library. I agree with you. I, that's all well, I agree with you because we, we had her on for the show sure. and I asked her this question about what do you mean by being a democratic socialist? And she went over her platform. She says Medicare for all. Good. Uh, fully funded public schools and universities. Love it. Paid family and sick leave. Good. Justice system reform, immigration justice, yeah. infrastructural overhaul, clean campaign finance, an economy of peace, housing as a human right. Well, I don't know. Can I just stop along with that? This makes my head explode, which, by the way, I hope Democrats do run a democratic socialist. Do you hope that just, we win? Do we win? Uh, the Democrats no, because I think you'll Trump? lose spectacularly, and then I will look forward to election night when I finally get to tell everybody I told you so, if you end up running a radical. Problem with socialism, in the words of Margaret Thatcher, at a certain point you run out of spending other people's money. Venezuela, one of the richest countries <coughs> in the world in the 70s. Now, the average Venezuelan has lost 24 pounds because they're starving to death. 90% of I the think country I to, like, is living in poverty. I think she's talking more about Scandinavia than Venezuela. As well. I, but as, I'm sorry. I need this is what I need from her. Name one country that socialism has ever worked, and also every Sweet. every democratic socialist Copenhagen. who is going um, on TV Denmark. saying that it's good Norway. needs to start paying ninety percent in taxes Iceland. on your tax form. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. That's it. That's all I've been asking for people on the left to do from the beginning here. So. They read her platform on air. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. And by the way, people on the right are just walking right into this trap. They have no idea what they're doing. There was an article in the Daily Caller from somebody who went to an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez rally, and she wrote about how uh, it's easy to see how you can be seduced by the idea that your kid deserves health care and, and education. I'm not kidding. She wrote that down. And a living wage, too, she said. Oh, it's easy to see how people who don't know better can think a living wage is a good idea. What? So she is now, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez broke the brains of the right so thoroughly that they are now openly arguing against the idea that if, if you work full-time, you should make enough money to survive. See, that's the thing, is that with these weak and corrupt Democrats of yesteryear, the Hillary Clinton wing, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, all those people, they were always just falling over themselves to agree with Republicans. They're Republican light, they're corporatists, they're neoliberals. So you have no argument when you, I'm like the other guy, except a little bit nicer, but I'm like the other guy. That there's, That's not appealing to anybody. But if you take a stand on issues that you believe in and you know you're right because they're common sense issues, living wage, Medicare for all, free college, end the wars, legalize marijuana, you are then forcing the right to respond to those things. And when they respond to those things with the deeply unpopular positions they hold, you win! They're arguing against the living wage, do you realize how fucking crazy that is? 80% of the American people want to raise the minimum wage. So now, they read her platform on air. Thank you, that's all I could ever ask, because as soon as people hear that, the re reaction Joy Behar was giving is the exact reaction that any reasonable human being would give. Yeah, okay, I like that, I like that one too, I like that one too, I like that one too. Listen, even if you disagree with one or two of the things in their platform, you're gonna agree with, like, over 90% of it. Even if you're somebody who thinks you're a conservative, you're gonna go, okay, that makes, alright, that makes sense, okay, that one too. So, that helps so much by going directly to the issues, reading one by one the things on the platform. Then, they go from, you know, she says, well, if you go by the platform, democratic socialism is, is pretty close to liberalism. Now, I know people who are deep political wonks might look at that and go, no, that's leftism, that's not liberalism, there's a distinction, we have to talk about that distinction. But listen, the reality is, what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez represents, what Bernie Sanders represents, what Justice Democrats represent, what the, these populist left candidates represent, 
It really is what Democrats should have been all along. New Deal Democrats. So, yes, it's what they should have been representing all along. So it's what one half of the political spectrum should have been pushing from day one and never stopped pushing. So in that sense, yes, it is close to liberalism because it's what they should have been doing every step of the way from the beginning. They just abandoned that. So that point is actually true. Like, oh, it's, isn't this like really just kind of common sense stuff and exactly what the, the left and, and liberals should have been pushing for all along? And then again, listen, the whole, the whole crux of this debate here it all starts with a straw man, because when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders, they say, we're uh, democratic socialists. Again, if you go by their policy proposals, they're run-of-the-mill social democrats. So in other words, they're not arguing for the, the um, social ownership of the means of production. Now, you might be in favor of that. Fine. That's, that's fine. But that's not what they believe. What they believe is explicit, and it's social democracy. Now, they call themselves democratic socialists. Okay, so I guess that label is evolving to one extent or another. But let's just be clear about the distinctions here. And by the way, DSA also now has come out and said, we consider ourselves a big tent for socialists. So if you are in favor of the social ownership of the means of production, fine, you have a home here. But if you are, are in favor of the Scandinavian model, welfare statism, social democracy, you're welcome here as well. And that's what their philosophy happens to be. So when they say democratic socialism, and then they lift, list off the things that are not post-capitalist, but just within a capitalist framework, much further to the left, well, that that's an accurate depiction of where uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders happen to fall on, on the spectrum. Now, I, I find it hilarious when... Um, Meghan McCain says, at a certain point, you run out of other people's money, quoting Margaret Thatcher when Thatcher argued against socialism. Meghan McCain, your dad is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And your dad is worth hundreds of millions because apparently your mom it was a beer heiress. So you're about to get a tremendous amount of inherited wealth that you did Dickie McGee's acts for. The only reason you're even on this show is because of your last name, you pampered little prick. So for you to take to argue against, ah, people shouldn't have their basic needs met. Unbelievable. They haven't even worked for it. When your whole life is just a red carpet of privilege. You need to www.sitthefuckdown.com, son. Because that is unbelievable. I mean, the lack of self-awareness is record-breaking. It's unbelievable. It's really just insane. Okay, and then finally, Joy Behar nailed it. Listen, if you are on the right and your rebuttal to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders or the Justice Democrats or whoever it may be, uh, you know, people who are now running, if your rebuttal involves referencing the Soviet Union, Venezuela, or Cuba, you have no rebuttal because that's a straw man. Nobody in Justice Democrats, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, none of, n n fully none of them have said, I believe in a post-capitalist philosophy. Uh, I support the Venezuelan system. None of them said that. So why are you bringing it up? You're bringing it up because you don't have an actual response. You don't have a rebuttal. So you have to straw man and then knock down the straw man. Which is why Joy Behar accurately points out, and Venezuela, things cost a lot, and things are going really poorly, and that's why this is so terrible. I can't believe she's arguing for a Venezuelan system. And she calmly says, I'm pretty sure she's arguing more for a Scandinavian-type system than for a Venezuelan-type system. And Meghan McCain, because she's incapable of listening, because she has a cinder block for her head, keeps going as if there wasn't a rebuttal to her point right there, and says, what she needs to do is name at least one country where this philosophy has worked. And then you asshole, Joy Behar nailed you to the wall. Because she's like, oh, how about I give you 46 countries where this philosophy has worked? Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Sweden. And she just goes on. And it's like, oh, okay. There you go. There's the answer. And I've, I've listen, even if you, you are further to the left um, than I am, or than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is, you have to have an answer. The, the, uh, the point of... Well, we haven't had a, the ability to implement this anywhere yet, but obviously it would work uh, if you give it a chance. That's not a good response. Because that's the same bullshit libertarians say, oh, we haven't had a perfect libertarian system implemented, so you can't really point to a... You can't, that's the same shit communists say. Well, it wasn't really communism. It, was, it wasn't implemented properly. <laughs> you have to have a, just a, a clear-cut empirical answer. Just, that, right there. 
Oh, Sweden. There. <laughs> Name a place of work. Sweden. That's it. That's it. Question answered. Flip it right back on them. Empirically, when you go to the data, uh, it's true that these countries do significantly better than we do in almost every relevant area. Whether it's uh, healthcare, uh, life expectancy, uh, self-reported happiness, vacation time, um, you know, climbing the, the economic ladder, social mobility. So... You have to have that cut and dry answer ready. And she did. And she did. And then that's why everybody was laughing at Meghan McCain and everybody was cheering for Joy Behar. And then towards the end there, you heard Meghan McCain again, another straw man. What I want everybody to do is fill out your taxes and give 90% of your money to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 90% tax rate. Well, number one, there was a time in U.S. history during the golden age of economic expansion, as they called it, under Eisenhower, where the top t the top marginal tax rate, that word marginal is very important, by the way, was 93%. So the U.S. had that. Now, that was just the nominal rate. That's not what's called the effective rate, so they weren't really paying 93%. But on paper, it was 93%. The effective rate was more like 43% when you add in all the loopholes and all the deductions and all that stuff. But the marginal rate means it only kicks in over a certain point. So it might even be the case, okay, your first five million is taxed at a much lower rate, but if you make more than five million, after that, it's taxed at 90%. And then you, again, you have to add in deductions and loopholes, and then boom, it goes all the way down to 40% or 50% or whatever it is. The rich are not oppressed! They're gonna be fucking fine! But what she does is she strawmans and acts like under a, a social democratic system, what you're gonna have is... Regular people who make $35,000 a year paying 90% of their money in taxes. That is nothing but a giant lie. That's what that is. They have no real rebuttal, so they lie. They don't even try to make a distinction between a, a marginal tax rate and a tax rate and an income tax rate. They, they, because they want to blur the lines and they want to confuse you and they want to mislead you. Because if they're being honest and upfront about... Uh, what they're arguing against, they can't win the argument. So they act like, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wants to raise a fucking plumber's tax rate to 90%. Fucking made up! Made up and grossly made up at that. So, uh, I that went really well because Joy Behar really held her own. You know, I've had huge disagreements with her in the past. If I'm not mistaken, I think she was more pro Hillary Clinton than Bernie Sanders, which is like, whoa, what are you doing, Joy? That's crazy. But... Here, I mean, she really redeemed herself here because that's exactly how I would recommend responding to people on the right who love to straw man, love to trot out Venezuela, love to trot out the Soviet Union. A dumbass Republican congressman the other day brought up North Korea to respond to Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie. So, listen, this is all they have. They, they, this is all they have. All they have are disgusting straw men of what we're arguing for. And when they drop the straw men, it gets even worse for them because like I said, then you get like that Daily Caller article when they just explicitly argue against a living wage and giving people health care. Okay, we win either way. Whether you straw man us, we win because you look ridiculous. Or whether you explicitly lay out what we're for and then mock it, we win because you don't have a coherent logical argument against what we're arguing for. You just have scorn. It's easy to see how one can fall for li a living wage idea. Okay, where's your point? Where's your argument? You have no argument. You're just like, I'm against it, and I'm going to write it down. Okay, well, you're still helping us because people are going to read that and go, you haven't made a point against it. <laughs> You've just laid out that they're for a living wage. Thank you. Now I like those people more. They can't beat us. They can't beat us when we actually lay out our ideas and our philosophy and do it in a clear way. And again, if you're ever presented with somebody who tries to straw man you, don't let them get away with it. Don't let them define you. Don't fall into the trap either, because oftentimes what happens is people try to go, no, I don't, uh, it's not that I'm, uh, I, I agree with Venezuela, but I'm going to now defend Venezuela. Now, it's okay to point out the fact that they're under economic siege, they're under economic warfare with sanctions from the most powerful country that ever existed, so that definitely in, count, uh, in part accounts for why they're in the uh, position they're in, but you don't have to go above and beyond in defending something you don't actually believe in. Now, if you do believe in it, okay, well, then you're in a position where you're going to have to defend it. But, you know, somebody like myself, I don't believe in that system. I don't have to defend that system. I don't believe in the Soviet Union. I don't have to, don't have to defend the Soviet Union. I don't believe in the Cuban system. I don't have to defend the Cuban system. I only have to defend what I actually believe in. And I believe in a 
social democratic system. I believe in the Scandinavian model. I believe in welfare statism. So, okay, I can defend that, and I can easily defend that because it works, and because all the empirical evidence points in that direction. So don't let them off the hook. Don't let them straw man you. And that's exactly what Joy Behar did there. And they're going to keep losing this debate and keep looking ridiculous because, like I said, they have no real rebuttal.